a previous video, I described how to create a mobile variant of your website using a moderately simple web theme. In part two, I'm going to work through a rather more complex design. I've already loaded the countryside theme from the content catalogue. So I'll create a mobile variant in the same way. The template we used in part one was quite simple, but of course some of your websites, and indeed some of the Zara templates, are rather more complex. In particular, a few years ago, in computer ancient history, we may have failed to imagine that we'd need to make our pages smaller. And we may therefore have used repelling and push margins that don't suit smaller pages. And sometimes we will have put images onto the background layer in order to ensure that they weren't accidentally changed, assuming they wouldn't ever need to be intentionally changed. So I'm going to show you how to deal with some of these issues if they turn up. I'll also give you some tips on a couple of more advanced options for optimising your sites for mobiles. Straight away, you can see I have an issue with the heading, which I can't select. That's because it's on the page background layer. You need to open up the page and layer gallery, as I've done here, and open up the page. Then you need to unlock the background layer by clicking on this padlock. Now you'll find that you can select it. And what you want to do is scale it down, like this. We need to adjust the heading text as well. And we have a nav bar here, which for the time being I'm just going to move to here. Again we have a widget, which I'm going to resize. This is pretty straightforward. And we have a page divider, which I'm going to delete. Don't be afraid to delete non-essential things in your mobile versions. Often they need to be simpler. And now you're going to see what I mean about problems with push margins. If I just resize this photo and try and drag it into the text here, you'll see it's got a huge border around it. The text has been pushed down. This is not what I want. So right click on the photo, go into position on page, select push, and you'll see that push has been set on this image with a 60 pixel margin. You can make that margin smaller, or you can just uncheck push. Now click apply. Now if I put the photo where I want it, you'll see that the border has gone. But what I need to do is turn repelling on. Right click on the photo, select repelling. I'll give it a 5 pixel border. OK, that's good. You can see the text is now flowing around my photo. And the page length has been adjusted automatically. As with the other example, I can adjust the footer quite easily. Don't forget you're made with Zara if you're an affiliate. There, we have a pretty acceptable page one. Now I'm going to tackle one other issue on page one. Take a look at the nav bar. You might think that's OK, but you might also have noticed that it's quite common on mobile variants to have one button nav bars. So I'm going to show you how to convert this into a one button nav bar. It's somewhat easier than you might imagine. Double click on the nav bar. That opens up navbar properties. Perhaps rather surprisingly, I'm going to start by deleting all the buttons in my navbar except the top one. Then also remove the link from the top button. Click the URL field next to the button in the dialog and choose Do Nothing. In the link dialog, unselect Site Navigation Bar and select it again. What this does is automatically create a new navbar based on the pages in your site. And it's put all of the pages on your site into the menus in our single button. You will want to rename the button to something like Menu or Navigation to explain its new function. Position it where you want it to go. I'm going to put it on the side here. You only have to do this once because the navbar is a repeating object. So you'll see on page 2 that you now have a single button in the same position. I'm just going to tidy up page 2, then we can preview the results and check our navbar. The only issue I have to deal with is these photographs. I'll scale them down a bit. I need to remove push again, so I open the dialog, uncheck push and click apply. Now move them onto the text where I want them. I need to turn text repelling on. 
I think that looks pretty good. And the length of page has been adjusted. OK, let's take a look at the preview. Now you can see that all of the pages are showing in the menu. I'll go to the About page that I just altered. You can see that worked nicely. Looks pretty good. But I don't much like the default grey colour for the menus in this design. And what's more, I think the text in my mobile version is looking a bit small. These are easy to fix. Firstly, simply scale up the menu button. Then double click to open menu properties again. And here you'll see an option to change the pop-up menu style. I'll make the font size 12 pixels and change the background colour to theme colour 1. Well, that's the navbar sorted. But before I preview it, I'll just show you a neat trick with the text styles. The default text size in this design is 12 pixels. But you'll find it's often better to increase the text size in your mobile version. Simply select a bit of the text with normal style applied, increase the font size, and then in the text style drop down, select the option Update style in this variant. All your text is adjusted in the mobile variant. And of course the pages are resized if required. The main variant is unaffected. So let's preview this again. Yes, I think the text size is looking better. And the navbar. Let's also check the main variant. Now I think we're ready for publishing.